Hello, Nancy Wilkins here. Um, I'm going to show you all how I'm going to make... Let me oh, clear the decks a little bit here. I'm going to make a journal page, but I'm going to do a little something different. I'm doing the Lori Marie Jenkins methods. Um, I've been extensively watching her videos. She is awesome. And instead of using paper to put down as what she calls underpants or underpinning, I'm going to use bits and pieces of fabric. I'm going to modge podge them down. As you can see, my book is trying to tear here. And so that's a good way to kind of give it a hinge. I've got another book underneath it to support. This is the last page of this book. That's not to say that the rest of it's done. It's just where I'm going to be working at today. So um, I have a few pieces of focal point, but First of all, let's get the fabric down. We're going to use them, use those scripts, scraps. I went to my scrap bag. I'm going to tear a few pieces first before I start gluing. And more strings, the better. Let's see. Oh, look at this. Yes, yes, yes. Stripes. So you get the drift. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to let me get going with my my glue. I have Mod, mod Podge here. I get called out for calling it Mod. It's, not, it's Mod Podge. And let's see. Here's a rag. And let's get my brush dried off. And let's see what we can do with this fabric. Okay, I won't slide like text pieces of paper whistle. You, where you want it is where you need to put it. I debated whether I should put some uh, paper down first, some pieces of tape or torn paper down first. And I said, nope, we're going to go with the flow here. And I'm trying to cover the seam here because that's where the book needs a little extra support. It's trying to tear. Here's another piece of fabric. And I didn't bother ironing them. I don't have to iron. I'm not going to iron. That's just my, my rule. Don't have to. Don't do it. When it comes to ironing. Unless we're sewing. <laughs> but we're not sewing. And you have to iron when you're sewing, so that rule still applies. Um, Mod Podge tends to turn fabric like into leather, and it feels so cool. I'm going to get this going, and I'll be back. So here it is. It's still wet, and there's still strings, but that's okay. It's bonus texture. Oops, we have a little corner. There's plenty of spaces where it overlaps. But I do want it all to lay down pretty flat. It's not the time for flapping pieces. And then I'm going to um, cover it with gesso. I have some homemade gesso here, but I'm going to wait for it to dry a little bit. Actually, I'm going to dry it with my heat stick. You don't want to listen to that. So, so now it's dry. Doesn't it look yummy? Nice and dry. I'm going to put some uh, gesso on it. I'm going to put a little uh, thin coat. So let me put a little water in here. I just squirt a little water on the surface. Take my brush. I don't want to use a brush water from my brush cleaner because it's so I'll see about just a little water in there one squirt and it's just sitting there on the top and it's still not enough this will help it you can still see the pattern it tones down a little bit of the colors so they will mix together better be cohesive they're gorgeous but we do need them to play well together. 
Let's see how my gesso is kind of runny so it's not actually covering up. And I'm going to do something else while I'm, I'm going to take a rag and kind of get some of the worst of it off, rub it. Because I don't want it completely covered. I just want it like a whitewash effect. There we go. And then, let's see, let's get a little bit more water in there. Put my brush right where that water's puddling. And a little bit goes a long way when you're just wanting to whitewash it. Don't want to take all of it off, but don't want to leave all of it on there. A little bit more. Let's make sure it gets all in the nooks and crannies. Put that in the water. And looky there. I don't know if you can see. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, you can see how now it's kind of like a whitewashed. There's a piece of fabric that's bent down. Just what I wanted. Let's cover up the gesso. Whoops. Part of my focal point. Speaking of focal points, what I'm going to do, I took, I had this fabric from like, oh, five years ago, maybe more, maybe less, and I ironed some fusible on the back, and I was going to iron it on some canvas and make a tote bag out of it. Well, if there's one thing I don't need is tote bags, because I already have, I've had a couple dozen of them. But, you know, you never can have too many tote bags. But I was going to make for a class, and the class got canceled. So I never finished it. So what I've done is fussy cut some of these flowers out to put on here. Keeping with the, you know, with the fabric theme. Here's another one. And then I have a cat. I'm going to pay honor to the link between cats and fabric, since this is a fabric I'm gonna but since this is just a thin magazine picture I have some white cardstock I'm gonna use um, a glue stick and glue it onto here onto the cardstock so that it won't wrinkle up when I try and put it, glue it down with Mod Podge and it keeps it stir fir firmer now, if I try to reprint this onto the cardstock and make a copy onto it, sometimes it comes out right, but you lose my computer, my printer, you lose a lot of the detail. So, you know, I'm going to put some leaves here. So what I'm going to do is um, glue it to the cardstock and then fussy cut it out, and he, she or he's going to go here. I've yet to meet a cat that didn't love quilts. My cats, the minute I put a quilt down, the cats I've had, the minute I put a quilt down, they're there. I'm trying to take pictures, and they always got to get in the picture. Anyway, I'm going to dry this, and then I'm going to, and I, then we're going to start playing with the focal points. Well, I was getting ahead of myself there. I can't do the focal points yet. I want to put a little color down, a little texture down. So I'm going to start with um, some purple. Let me get a a dish to put that in and smear some purple around and put some texture on and smear some other color around just a little bit of purple and because I want it to go a little bit thinner but I don't want to lose the color this is um, glazing by golden but there's other things you can put don't use water I don't use water to extend or thin out my paint I just use glazing or acrylic gel I mean, gel medium would work 
and get my brush dry. Poor brush, it needs a good, solid, some attention here, doesn't it? I use my brush just to mix a little bit together. And see how it's still just as dark. You got your whole pigment, but it's not covering up all that work we did with the fabric. We don't want to put that fabric down like that and then not be able to see all the pieces. So this will help. This will add some, some more toning. I'm not trying to get it solid. Too solid. I just want to another color wash, just like the gesso was a wash. This is like a purple color wash, and that glazing also helps me to get it everywhere and then mess with it after I put it on because it the glazing makes it last longer before it dries. It takes a little bit longer to dry with the glazing in it. Let me get a piece of paper towel or a paper towel. Don't want to get that purple on my rag. Does everything I'll everything I touch afterwards will have purple in it with that rag. Okay, there we go. Get the excess off. Isn't that pretty? And I'm gonna dry this. I'll be right back. It's relatively dry. It's not all the way dry. Then I'm going to use a stencil to add a little texture. Let me get my texture out. It should be right here. There it is. I, I never expected to be such a big container. This last time I made a bunch of it. I used um, Laura Marie's recipe and I decided to use this stencil because it's a flower and we're putting flowers on why not but I'm not going to use the whole thing anywhere I'm just going to put petals here and there because I don't need the whole flower I got real flowers coming I'm using a scraper. Oh, that didn't, that didn't do too well there. Let's just scrape that part off. This is from um, Pampered Chef. When you get their stoneware, they give you a scraper to clean it with when you buy it. And I have a few pieces from the days when I used to cook. Y'all had those, you have all of them. When I used to cook, or when I used to sew, or when I used to, and you have equipment from then. then. Let's see if we can get this on there right. I'm not real happy with that one over there, but it will do. I'm not gonna mess with it. There we go, yeah. And one here. This is a little bit different from what a normal, or a reg, not normal, there's no such thing as normal, but what a regular mixed media is. Usually a mixed media has crazy pictures and old uh, Victorian pictures or Renaissance pictures or men in tights sort of thing. Sorry about that. All right, I was saying, usually mixed media has men in tights, women with fancy dresses and you put crowns on them, you put animal heads on men, and you do crazy things. And it's fun. I'm not knocking on that. There's some in this book, and in fact, I have some of those things in this book. But this one's just a little sweet kitty cat smelling the roses. Boy, this is, this is not coming out. Okay. I know what it is. This is what I got underneath here that's doing that. 
me this one came out, but this one has something underneath the second the page underneath there is not flat. So we're just going to get it as smooth as we can and see what happens. Oh yeah, that'll work. All right, let me clean off my stencil because I don't want it setting up and ruining. I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to put another color on. All right, it's dry enough. Um, when I push on the texture, there's just a few spots that are squishy still, like that one right there. But it's dry enough. Time to put on another color. This is awful purple. Awful purple. But that's okay. Not awful, but it's very pretty purple, but lots of purple. Now, this one I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, thin out with glazing liquid I'm going to use as is. It's just, these are just craft paints. I'm not using the expensive acrylic paints that come in the um, tube. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Where's my... There's my... I want pieces of purple to show through. Patches of purple to show through, rather. And then I want patches of solid. This is a salmon color. Isn't that pretty? Salmon and purple. Only a little more. One thing nice about craft paint, it will dry up chalky. If you get a just old cheap paint, but it dries up chalky. And all this gooey stuff I've been putting on here is going to be negated by the chalkiness of the craft paint. So it helps to keep it from... I'm not too worried about right here because the cat's going to go right there. My focal point. Okay, and let's see if we can get a purple somewhere. Oh yeah, you can still see the purple. It seems to me, and, and when you use acrylic, a lot of acrylic and the gel stuff, and you use a heat gun on it, it just brings more stickiness to the surface. And I uh, don't use the um, heat gun any more than I need to, but today, of course, I'm using it a lot because I want to get this video done. And so I can edit it and get it off my camera. It takes up a lot of space on the storage. Whoa, look at there. Interesting. I think we're going to leave it. In fact, we might just clip it a little bit so we can see it. Texture. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Okay, this is not going to take much drying and the next thing I want to do before I dry it is put some some, some white flicks on it white flicks I'm going to I need another another dish this will work I need a big dish for this you know, a big um, compartment in a dish. Put some white, a little water, and a fan brush. 
21. Those brushes are the hardest ones to find in my there it is. They're the hardest ones to find in my drawer. Let's see. Let's see if I got a stir stick. I got one if I can get it out of the drawer. There we go. Stir that up a little bit. Oh yeah. And Just need a little noise. That's a little noise, a little bit. It goes a long way. And you got it. We got it dry. It's dry, and I got a little ahead of myself with the flicking because I needed to. I wanted to sand. So this is the sanding block that you can get at the hardware store, Home Depot, or Lowe's, and I wanted to sand around these texture pieces. It's not bringing it up like I thought it would. There we go. See the different colors. And you know what? Those flicks are doing fine. They're just holding up just fine. Which tells me a sanding box probably not very good. I'll make sure y'all can still see. This does. Okay, we got we're gonna have to do something there. Either glue it down or glue it one way or the other. Yes, we'll glue it back down. So much for my nonsense on it. Now I want this right here. Let's see if you can see. I'm gonna sand that off. I think it's time for a new sanding block. Ah, oh, heck, let me break out my... Hold on. We're going to bring out the big guns, gang. This is my mouse sander. <laughs> I'm going to use it, but I'm going to turn it off while you... While I turn off the video while I do it. Y'all so don't... The secret it. weapon did the trick. See where you can see the flowers kind of coming up. The Not the flowers, the texture coming up. And while I'm looking at that, we're going to glue that down. Put a little, you can see where it goes. So I can just, and this is glitter glue. You can't tell because I had to, the label and everything just got so nasty. I had to cover it up with washi tape. But this stuff works good. I can glue magnets on with this thing this glue. So I highly recommend it. All right. One more thing. I want to put some gold on here. So let me get out my gold foil sheets. Here's some. And let me get my spray. This is 505. I just have had it for ever and a day, and I just like it's time to use it up. So I've been using it for my foil sheets. It says temporary, but who knows? It means you can't wash it. When you wash it, it comes out. Ooh, look, there's some colors in here. I thought I saw some colors in here. Look at there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's going to be gorgeous. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. Oh, 
Ooh. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but I have turquoise shining. If I can get this up. <laughs> Nothing like gluing your foil sheet to the paper. Okay, there we go. I'll hold on to a corner from now on. Oh, look, it's making those cool, cool, cool. Look what it's doing. I'll hold it up when I get done so see if I can make the sparkle show for you. It's just real subtle. Except in some spots, it's not so subtle. But we need a little more. Guess the glue dried. Sitting there messing with it. Oh, loving it, loving it. Get some right there. Why is that bubbling, huh? It's like, oh, I'm settling in to make a home. Oh, yes. This is perfect. Just what the page needed. Who would have figured? Purple salmon and turquoise. And there are some spots you can still see the fabric. Not very many. Here's some dots. There's some stripes. All right. Let's see if I can make this show up on camera. See? See the glitter? Ooh. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Now we can do focal points. So here's one. And I cut my kitty cat out. Look at her. I'm going to have to tear this off right there. Look at her. Oh, she's so sweet. I love tabbies. And then there was, yes, see this? It's going to be on her head. She's smelling the flowers. And uh, got to cover up this little part of the advertisement here. And I'm trying to decide, we need to put something here, down here, so she doesn't look like she's floating in it. Let's see, I brought out some music. Okay, fame, unsheath your claws, enjoy the game. Oh no, that's not a good one. Nope, we're just going to use music with no words. I was reading the words, we're not going to use those words. No, no, no. I don't know what that one was, but here, I'll tear it straight, Nancy. This may not work. This may not be good enough for. Let me tear. I'm just going to tear one little strip of music. Whoa, knock things over over there. Let's see, put this here. And we only need it to be. Let's do the music right side up. People think I don't know what I'm doing. Otherwise, and I don't. <laughs> yeah, there's it. There's the letters that are right side up. wonder if I should do it. Wait a minute. Come on. That glue's still in there. I'm going to take this like that and put it like here. Like the kitty cat's on top of the music. Or the music's on top of the kitty cat. 
cats make their own music with their purring. Love a tabby. All right, see, that's a little sweet sweetness and light there. Oh, and, whoops. All sweetness and light. And then um, when I get this put down, I'll do some stabilo around it. Oh, I covered up that. Oh, well. All that work got out my secret. Disclosed my secret weapon. And I didn't need it there. But this does come out. Let's see. Let's, what's the best? It's not, yeah, we can do it this way so we can see. And I knew the cat was going to be there, and I love this, like she's sniffing the flowers. All right, I'm going to glue this down, and then I'm going to go over it with my Stabilo. And, well, I'm glue it down with Mod Podge, Mod Podge, and maybe put some lines there where the fabric meets each other. I'm going to have to sand a little bit, though, because this is sticky with a... I'll be back. All right, so they're all down. I added a butterfly, and I added a few more pieces to it to make it look a little more random instead of blob, blob, blob. And um, now it's time to do the stabilo. And I thought I would show you a little bit of what I'm doing before I turn the camera off. I use, um, this is, here's a new one. Paper, glass, plastic, metal. Is a stabilo. Here it is. It says stabilo all. Um, and what it does, it's, you know, they're all stabilo. It, it's water soluble. And um, you can just go ahead and I go around your focal points. And you can take a little water, wet your finger or something, but I used to use a blender pen to smear it some. Gives a little shadow and depth to these focal points. And then I'll go around the edges. And Let's see if you just take a little bit of water. I just lick my finger, in case you're wondering. And put it, and it adds a depth or dimension to the whole um, picture. Look at how much difference that makes up there already. So I just keep going. Another thing you can use with this to be a little pencil is what I call a stub. Let's see if I got one handy. This is, and it kind of blends it out. And this, I have a whole bunch of different things. Here we go. These are called blending sticks, blending sticks. Here's a skinny one, a fat one. And any of these things will work. Finger works good. Whereas there's, there's a lot of Mod Podge. I said it right, didn't I? 
you can just really just smear it with your fingers without any kind of getting wet. So here's the kitty cat's ear. We don't want to we want to make sure we notice that ears out there. And I'm going to do the whole thing and I'll bring it back when it's done. And this is after this tabilo. And now I'm going to add a little bit of white here and there because we have so much dark. And having the dark and the light is what helps the picture have some contrast. And you can see the individual. Let's see if it has some butterfly wings here that need a little light on them and then i'm going to put a little light there around the edges of the butterfly wings so you can see them the edges of the flowers so just to make them pop a little bit And when it starts writing, you can see where I've been doing the stabilo. And then sometimes you need to rub it to get the... There we go. And also I found the secret of using these gel pens is not to push. Just let it glide so that roller baller in there can roll. There's a roller ball, ball inside the tip of the gel pen, and you want it to roll. If it doesn't roll it, when you push it too hard. But the rolling it will gives you fresh ink on each. All right, now we have the kitty cat here, and we need to kind of highlight his or her. See, I don't want it too much in your face. And let's get his ears. Top of his ears, because that's where the sun shines hitting. Sounds like hubby's outside doing a chainsaw. Top of his nose. Well, nope, I wiped it off. I don't want it like a line, but <laughs> and let's highlight this leaf a little bit. Just the edges of it. And this is a gel pen. Now, when I want to start adding some accents here, I was trying to decide where else I need some white. This butterfly's kind of not showing up. There we go. If you kind of look at the edge of something as to where the dark ends and where the light begins. It seems like there's always a distinct line of white and dark right next to each other. And that's what I'm imitating here, but exaggerating it a little bit. Just exaggerating it just a bit, making the dark behind on one side black and then the white just pure white on the other side and you know you can just go on and on with this and just keep adding and adding to the point where you <laughs> don't know when to stop and as you can see I'm um, keep adding okay so let me use this white to show you what else I'm gonna do with it let me get a piece of paper Get one out of the trash. That'll work. Make sure my... Oh, see, I'm glad I didn't do that. Where'd the 
make sure my tip is white and my paint coming out is white. And I'm going to do a little doodle. And that's not what I want. We're just going to put some dots here. And dots there. Here. Here. Um, just to kind of add a little something, something to it. I decided I didn't like that over there. Uh, what else? Let's see. Oh, that's it. That's all I'm going to do, those dots. But you can also go back and do some doodling. But there's so much going on here. I don't think I need any more doodling with all the background. It has lots of stuff going on in it. All right, so that's it. This is my garden song, kitty cat garden song picture. Thank you for watching. I got a little off camera there to the end, but I thought I'd let you see it up close. Here's the, see the butterfly and the texture here. And there's another butterfly and of course a kitty cat and everything. You can't see much of the fabric now, but I promise you, you can you can tell it's there. It's a little bit more than what um, paper would do. And you can definitely feel it there. And this is one of those pieces that you want to reach out and touch. And the fabric on the top, the flowers and stuff, they have a different texture to them. I have to say, I like working with the fabric because it's um, a whole lot sturdier than a piece of paper would be. I could, it was um, lift it up, push it down, whatever I wanted to do with it. So the fabric flowers were hit with me. And, um, so, but this is what we did with the fabric.